Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. So we had been discussing chapter 2, Sankhya Yoga, Yoga of Knowledge. We are coming to the concluding verses of chapter 2. So if we can recall what we have learned so far in chapter 2. Bhagwan initially gave Arjuna various viewpoints to motivate him to fulfill his duties. That is, a general of the army... It is your duty right now to fight this war. And you can't run away. You cannot take your role lightly. So that's a takeaway for us. Any role that we take in this life, it comes with its own duties. And my job is to fulfill those duties sincerely. Then Bhagavan also gave Arjuna advise how to act in this world, which I consider probably the most important verse in this chapter, that if you can understand that verse and get some guidance from it, then you will learn what Bhagavan is trying to teach us. Bhagavan says, Yogastha Kuru Karmani Sangha Tyaktva Dhananjaya Siddhi Asiddhi Samo Bhatva Samatvam Yoga Uchyade In this one verse, Bhagavan has given us a complete instruction of how to act in this world. The first thing is that establish in yoga. And then he defined yoga for us. Samatvam yoga uchyate. Equanimity of mind is yoga. If I can control my mind in all situations, in all outcomes, that's yoga, Bhagavan said. Keep that equanimity and with that equanimous mind, act in this world and that will only come if Sangha if you detach yourself from your actions and this world of objects then only you can have the equanimity of mind so that's the golden advice Bhagavan gave it to Arjuna Arjuna obviously is in the same situation as we are we find this thing completely counterintuitive that I cannot work in this world if I have no attachment. And if I have no attachment, then how can I be motivated to do anything in this world? We work for our children because we are attached to our children. We perform our duties in our profession because we are attached to our profession. So we find this thing very counterintuitive and counterproductive actually. That if I lose all interest and attachment and desires, I'll become a completely useless person. I will not be able to perform anything. So there must be something which I'm missing out from this advice. So Arjuna asked Bhagavan, is there any person who has such qualities? He said, can you describe qualities and virtues of a perfect person? Sthita Pragna. And Bhagavan said, yes, I can. So Bhagavan said, Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Manogata. The one who gives up all the desires of the mind. And Atmaiva Atmani Tustaha. And he is satisfied in the self, by the self. Tita Pragnati Uchyate. It is very simple, Bhagavan said. One who has given up all desires of the mind. So again, we find this thing not really very satisfactory. Because giving up all desires of the mind, we find it not possible. So there must be something which we are still missing out. Why we find it so difficult and Bhagavan keep insisting on it. So then we have to analyze the anatomy of desire. So we have learned in Sankhya Darshan that 
there were two entities originally purusha and prakriti purusha getting entangled with prakriti creates the world of objects or sansara as we call it purusha is conscious but inactive prakriti is inert but active when the two comes together it creates the mahat which is buddhi so buddhi is created the second thing is created is ahankar we are talking about the cosmic buddhi or total buddhi and total ahankar once the ahankar is created then all things come into being five sense organs five organs of actions five great elements so the sansara started it all started not from the buddhi but from the ahankar so right now i am seeing things through the lens of my ahankar now ahankar not in the sense of egotistical person but the sense of doership and enjoyership when i look at this world through my lens of my limited ego the conditioned consciousness then i find that this desires are necessary bhagwan did not say that give up all needs from your life there will be need for all the roles which i play to fulfill my duties for the roles which have taken in this life i have needs and i have to acquire things and obtain things to fulfill those needs but we are confusing our needs with our desires therefore bhagwan used the word manogatan of the mind he did not say what is necessary for you to do to fulfill your duty but once it what the mind finds enchanting those are the things which i want to enjoy not that i need them this corona virus taught us that we need very little i haven't go, gone to the laundry for dry cleaning my shirts for about 4 months now but w- our mind tells us that no no i need all of those things so but once it manogatan kaman sarvan prajahati one who gives up all the desires of the mind not of yourself you as a conditioned being has your own needs that will create your own actions without acting i cannot fulfill my needs or my duties therefore actions are necessary therefore i need to know how to act in this world without creating unnecessary desires so bhagwan says such a person who is established in this wisdom he does not have the desires of the mind he has all other activities but not the desires of the mind so now we have a question what is so different about that person that i am missing out that i can't feel the same way is a man of perfect wisdom bhagwan is described he feels so we have seen that our view point will determine how we perceive the world our view point will determine whether this is a good time or a bad time for some people this is a right time because the pollution is less traffic is less everything else is calm so last verse which we have discussed bhagwan gave a pointer why this muni is so different than you and i and he said ya nisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagarti sanyami all that muni has done is changed his view point where the reality which i see very real he sees that as not very real that world which i consider to be very real in my dream world when i wake up i found that to be not real because i changed my perspective from a dreamer's perspective to waker's perspective this muni has changed his perspective rather than looking at it from the narrow perspective of his ahankar as the enjoyer and doer he now sees from the total consciousness of perspective he starts seeing the reality from the wider perspective so therefore he said ya nisa sarva bhutanam tasyam jagarte sanyam from the fact which all other people are ignorant the muni is very aware of that reality that this life is very in narrow existence 
Right now, I consider this body to be me, but I know from my experiences that this body is not really a permanent abode of myself. Even for my ego, this is not my permanent abode. From our perspective, I learned transmigration or punar janma. In my next janma, the same jiva will not consider this body of any relevance. So the muni who has woken up to that reality that this life is a very narrow perspective I have, then he sees that from a wider perspective. Therefore, he sees the reality completely differently. Rather than seeing it from the conditioned consciousness perspective, who is the doer and who is the enjoyer, now he sees it from the wider perspective. Once he overcomes his ego, now the buddhi is available. So mind right now, when it gets the impression from the world outside, it reports directly to the ahankar first. And ahankar says, this is good, I can enjoy it or I will suffer from it. And it decides what is good or bad for me and the desires are created for things which I like and my efforts to avoid things which I don't like. So he said, Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani, where people make efforts to gain their happiness. Sa Nisa Pasyatomuni, he sees there is ignorance that my happiness does not lie outside. My happiness lies in identifying with my consciousness. Myself is consciousness is not bound by this conditioning. Conditioning is superimposing on the consciousness. This body is a conditioning. My mind is a conditioning. Intellect condition. He realizes the fact that these are my equipment and therefore he sees the world of his being from a wider perspective. He said once he has changed this perspective, now he is satisfied with his own self. He's fulfilled. So the analogy used in next verse, Bhagavan says, Apuryamanam achala pratistham samudram apaha pravisanti yadvat. Situation remaining the same, that the world of objects are received through my senses and I'm, my mind is getting impressions of those objects. But those impressions are not making any difference in the tranquility of my mind because my mind is now associated with my greater self. This analogy is very important for us to understand because it says that as the waters enter into the ocean, the ocean does not get disturbed. It does not overflow. Now, we have to realize that it is applicable to ocean, but not applicable to anything else like a creek or a river. A creek or a river will overflow if more waters enter into that creek. So we are right now more like a creek. And then we, when the waters come of the impressions of the sense objects, it overflows and it creates desires. But for a muni, because he is already fulfilled. So, apuryamanam achalam pratistham. He is filled from all sides. Achalam, unmoving, pratistham. It is established in steadiness. Because it is fulfilled, is full from all sides, those new waters entering does not overflow. So, sea level is rising. But waters entering from the rivers, it does not really affect the stillness of the ocean. That's the analogy here. And it says, Tadvat kama yam pravisanti sarve sah santim apnoti na kama kami. In the same manner, when the impressions from the outer world through the senses enter the mind of a yogi, does not get disturbed because his mind is already fulfilled. It's completely filled with satisfaction. There is no more satisfaction to be gained from the world outside. Therefore, it remains still. If my mind is not fulfilled yet, this will not apply to me. And therefore, Bhagavan said that such a person will only get the santi, not kama kami, the desirer of desires. If I think that objects will give me that, then obviously I will not feel peace. 
which a yogi is feeling. So it's actually my journey now to get from where I am at a level of a creek or a river to get to a level of an ocean as far as my mind is concerned. When that mind is identified with total consciousness, then only it can achieve that state of stillness. Me expecting that at this level is futile. And therefore, my goal right now is not to achieve that, but to achieve the purity of my internal instrument, antahakana suddhi. For that reason, Bhagavan has prescribed karma yoga. Gradually, your mind and intellect will get purified, your chitta will become purified, and you will achieve this state. But while you are not at that state, rather than focusing on what is that state, how can I get to the state, will be my journey. So, Santi Mapnoti, na kama kami. Desires will not give you the peace of mind which you are looking for. So, establish yourself in your karma yoga so that you can achieve that state of stillness. And then Bhagavan continues that dialogue and says, Vihaya kaman ya sarvan pumam charati nispruhaha nirmamaha nirahankaraha sa santim adhigachati Again, Bhagavan gives us the pointer here, how to achieve that peace. As long as I have the ahankar, that I am the doer, this is not possible. Therefore, first thing you have to work is on your ego. I have to at least have an intellectual appreciation that I am not the doer. By my own observation, that I really am not in control of things which I am doing. Many people have to do many things for me to perform one task. Even to go from here to my office, so many people have to do so many things. The roads have to be clear. Traffic should be in orderly fashion. My vehicle should be in good condition. Somebody should have made this vehicle before so that I can use it. When I come to this conclusion that I play a very small role in this life, that's my starting point, Nir Ahankara. As such a person who starts realizing that his role in this life is very narrow and he should just focus on the duties of this role only. Nir Mamaha. There is nothing mine in reality. Everything I consider mine turns out to be part of the Prakriti. It came from the Prakriti. It will go back to the Prakriti, including my body. One who starts realizing, Such a person achieves that peace of mind. Santi is what we are looking for. We are not looking for happiness or unhappiness avoidance because one is positive, other is negative. Now, whether I consider unhappiness as negative or happiness as negative depends on my point of perspective. So, in reality, there is nothing called happiness. It's just the lack of unhappiness is what I consider happiness. So, unhappiness is more positive entity because I feel it. Happiness is I'm feeling absence of unhappiness. So, what I'm really looking for is not happiness nor unhappiness, I am looking for bliss, which is santi. Therefore, Bhagavan said, sa santim adhigachati vihaya kaman sarvan. One who has given up all the desires of achieving that peace by acquiring objects from this world. As long as I have this idea that acquiring something from this world will give me happiness, then the cycle will start all over again. Pumam charati nispruhaha. I'm right now fearful that my actions in this world will bear wrong results and I'll be unhappy. So it's more like we're in a lockdown situation all the time. That we are so afraid that my interaction with the world outside will create unhappiness. So therefore, we are not going outside because maybe any interaction with anybody right now may infect me with this coronavirus. So what I'm trying to do is I want to achieve that state where there is no fear of coronavirus and I'll be moving freely. Puma Amcharati Nispruha is freely moving in this world of objects without having 
any fear of getting infected by unhappiness. And we know from our efforts right now, when there's a vaccine and I have immunity, then I will be moving in this world freely, just as I was doing before. Bhagavan said, the person who is immune from unhappiness, he can act in this world, work in this world, move around in this world freely, without any fear of getting unhappiness. In the last verse, Bhagavan concludes, Esha Brahmistiti. This is the state of becoming one with the Brahman. Before you achieve that state, the state of desirelessness is not possible. However, this is your goal. That does not mean that you can achieve that today. But if you work at it through Karma Yoga, you will achieve it someday, sometime. And it does not matter what time you achieve that. So it says, Esa Brahmistiti. This is the state of being one with the Brahman. One with the Supreme Consciousness. Your own self. Na enam prapya vimuhyati. Once you have experienced that, there is no fear of delusion again. It is something like when I wake up from my dream, there is no fear that I'll be confused if that world was real and not this world. Thitva asya antakale api. Brahma Nirvanam Ruchati. Even that understanding occurs at the last minute, Antakala. Even at the time of death, if this understanding occurs, then what is Brahmistiti? That when my identification with my consciousness and not with my equipment is the real identification, then Brahma Nirvanam Ruchati, such a person will achieve the state of Brahmistiti instantaneously at that time. So, it is something like when I wake up from my dream is not important. Do I wake up during the night, in the middle of the night, or early part of the night, or early morning while I'm ready to wake up, almost. It does not matter. When I wake up from the dream, now I am a waker the world of reality I will recognize is the waker's world and not the dreamer's world. As long as I am a dreamer, there is no chance of me being acting as a waker. But there is a path given here from this state of my delusion that this conditioned self is the real self and this world which I experience is real to identify with the supreme self through karma yoga. And then once I realize, there is no action required. And we will see that in next 16 chapters. So I'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhagbhave Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om